the coos. That's how they get a call from Andy Coos. Mole Patrol. Yeah, that's right, everybody. It's the Mole Patrol here on RHAP, still talking about Netflix's The Mole, and indeed, still talking about it for the second time this very evening on a Soul Sunday here, October 30th, as The Mole Patrol continues our coverage of Netflix's The Mole. We have all just hopped off the line with the great professor, Christian Hubicki, and we are here with another treat for all of you out there who are still hungry for more mole. So we'll introduce the panel. First, I'm Josh Wiggler. Hi, hello. I'm here with Jessica Lease. Jess, how are you? I'm doing great, Josh. Very excited. Yes, very excited indeed. Brooklyn Zed, very excited. Always keeping that mole energy going at 9 o'clock on a Sunday night. <laughs> it never goes away, does it, Rob Sesternino, that energy? It that, better pod, not. that late Sunday night podcast energy, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It stays alive all this time. Well, I'm so excited to bring in our latest guest, our latest honorary member of the patrol. And I believe, in fact, the chief of security uh, of our subdivision known as Troll Patrol uh, is this latest guest that we are bringing into the podcast. You know that they are a team player because this is somebody who always feels like they're going to help out and do the least desirable challenge. And that is joining the Mole <laughs> Patrol on a Sunday night post season after a season of the Mole. So psyched to have one of the breakout stars of Netflix's The Mole, Greg Shapiro. Welcome to the pod. Thank you so much for having me. This is not the least desirable challenge. For yeah, sure. there's probably yeah. less desirable podcasts to be on. I feel like I could say that without too much ego. Shade. I mean, uh, there's oh, so I guess many. There's I guess this is the worst one. Pause. This is the Turn worst one. Pause. Yeah, this is the worst one. <laughs> Take a oh, sip. No. It's not mm. a great look, but mm. uh, you're here, and that's great for us. So thank you for being here. We're excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. So are we going to recap the last podcast? Because yes. Uh, that so, guy has a lot of feelings. I'll, sure. leave, <laughs> I'll leave that to Rob if yeah. you want to break down what Christian just no said. No need. People can go listen to the last podcast. Indeed. That's fine. But it's Christian, fine. We're, it's time to talk to Greg. Christian <laughs> did want us to pass along offline if this softens any feelings you may have had about any of his takes that you were his favorite player on the season. I mean, uh, I listened to it, and when he said that the show fell off after I got eliminated, I was like, this man is a genius. I mean, he's after my own heart. Yeah. And then I think he, some assumptions were made. He said he wanted to hear about more of the thoughts of the other players, but I think that assumes that the, the players have. <laughs> wow. Oh, no. Coming in hot. Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> But All right. Well, we, we this will is see. what you get, you uh, should expect with with Greg, and that's why I thought he was so much fun on the show because uh, I feel like Greg that you were a character that was like my favorite kind of character on a reality TV show. That you were, as I like to say, the straw that stirred the drink. Where I feel like that uh, you were not afraid of like uh, saying something that might uh, you know not be something like uh, totally simpatico with the group. Uh, and I thought it makes for a very compelling television. Well, thank you. I mean, I was there for a good time. Not the whole time, but mm -hmm. I think anything that I did was for my own entertainment, for sure. And well, ours. Yeah. And we yours, yeah, for of ours, course. For sure. 100%. <laughs> so we're going to talk to Greg. We've got a live chat. Of course, we are live on RHAP's YouTube page right now. So if you're here, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Of course, the requisite, am I having fun? Let us know. Are you having fun out there in the chat? We'd love to hear it from you. Uh, of course, you should be subscribed to the podcast as well so you never miss episodes of The Mole Patrol by subscribing to Mole Patrol. Rob has a podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And just Rob has a podcast generally as well. Greg, how did this happen, uh, getting you on the ball in the first place? Is there an origin story that's particularly interesting, or you just get your DMs slid into like the rest? Oh, I mean, my my Instagram was dusty before the show, so I was doing freelance work on Reddit, which is as dusty as it gets, mm. and I saw, I saw posting on Reddit for the auditions for The Insider, so I made a video and I heard back within 24 hours that I got a call back. Okay. Uh, were you a fan of the, were you a fan, were you a fan of the mole heading into this at all? Were you um, aware? I'm, did you know that the insider was deep cover for the return of the mole? I knew that the rules were the same. Like that was quickly, but I, I took it for face value. I was like, the show is called the insider. 
Um, I've definitely been a fan of like reality shows for a really long time. Like my bar mitzvah theme was Survivor. Survivor, oh. <laughs> Survivor, Greg's bar mitzvah, Outwit, Outlast, Outpray. Um, <laughs> please tell me that all the candle themes were also survivors. The candle, it was like rhymes. grandma, like you are. Yes. <laughs> you are like, oh. candle. I'm so happy to hear it. Um, Fire represents your life. Yeah, exactly. Please add to my life. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I never actually seen the original. I was aware of it. And then once I was in the process, um, I got the DVD off of Amazon. And then I watched the first season without knowing um, who the mole was. Nice. Um, did you, uh, no spoilers, I guess, if, if you end up spoiling it, then people you're warned this could be a mole season oh one boy. spoiler. But did you, you clocked the mole pretty early. Where did you go with it? How did you feel like, what was the what was the progress report on going through an episode, I, a season of the mole? I thought the winner was the mole. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Is that, I think a lot of people yeah. thought that. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah, I think along the way, I thought maybe as well. Self-loathing mole, is that, does that sound right, <laughs> yep, Jess? Yeah. Yep, Self-loathing yes. mole. Yeah, I kept thinking that he was like, I don't want to do this, uh, but I have to. It's in my contract. Um, okay, cool. So you 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 land the audition. You get onto, what was the, uh, what did you tape for them? What got you the call back so quickly? Um, I made a video of just me being completely evil and unhinged, and uh -huh. um, <laughs> they liked it. Um, and you know, just, just my normal self. And then there were a lot, a lot of interviews, um, one after the other, um, and then a lot of waiting. And I think there was times where, you know, they just went, I don't want to, I can't get into all like the productionness of it all, but I finally got the word, um, that I was going after, um, like psychological evaluations and tests and physicals and all of that stuff. So we got our flight details like um, maybe like two weeks before we flew to Australia. And oh, even wow. then there were alternates in Australia. So you really didn't know oh. if you were on until you stepped foot into the jungle. Wow. wow. Um, for you, as somebody who had a survivor themed bar mitzvah, so you at least had been thinking uh, about this uh, since becoming a man at the young age of 13. Uh, did you have like sort of like starstruck qualities about the process of being on a reality TV show? A lot of this like hurry up and wait behind the scenes that can be really frustrating. Was any part of that energizing for you as you were getting ready to, to do this, like to really be behind the behind the curtain here? I think like it's kind of you have you seen the movie Arrival? Yeah. With Amy Adams. Yeah. So she's like behind the screen and she like does this and then the alien does that. So that was in the jungle for me. I was like, hmm, like everyone's looking for this cargo. Like, let me go guard the cargo. And then like one camera showed up and I was like, hmm, let me grab a banana. And then like two <laughs> cameras showed up. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, super fun. So you you find out when you're when you're in Australia that you're officially on the show. Uh, boots are on the ground. You're in the jungle. So how did how did this like really begin? Did they just release you from the back of a car and they're like, go play? <laughs> it was. I mean, it was truly, truly Hunger Games. Like we were lined up. We were you not killed allowed, the alternates. We were not allowed to speak. There were like umbrellas preventing us from looking at each other. And um, yeah, they just set us free onto this plane. And I was like, here we go. Like, let's ring this triangle. Greg, did you? <laughs> the tri yeah, okay, you brought the triangle. What was the triangle? So I, something told me to just bring a triangle with me. And then like all my, like the night before I have all my stuff and they tell you like what you can bring for that. And you send all your luggage away. And I was like, I think I need to bring this triangle. And then I had it in my pocket. And then I was like, this is the time to ring it. And so I actually rang it because um, we needed to form some kind of group consensus. And then what happened after was Ose and Dom are immediately like, oh, like, let's do yoga. Like, I feel like meditating. And that was exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to use nonverbal communication to share something about me. So it's more powerful if other people are saying, Greg is about this stuff versus me saying, I'm Greg, like, let's do yoga, you know? So it worked. And then the triangle, the producers took it away and I never saw it again. <laughs> yeah. 
But do you own a triangle or is the mole sort of like after you get out of an escape room, there's just like a bunch of props that you can take with you to take the picture? Oh, no, I brought I bought a triangle for this. And it's your luxury I, item. Yeah, it was it was the mole. Yeah, no, that was I was. But I mean, also like Osei like had the leaf and I was like, this is like a prop situation. I was like, OK, I see your leaf and I'll raise you a triangle, a case and a banana. Yeah. I don't want to know what the leaf was for, for Ose, mm -hmm. based on his episode one confessionals. <laughs> uh, but, but that's for a different deep dive. I, I wanted to ask about, Greg, were you hoping that they would come to you shortly before the production began and tell you that you were going to be the mole? I was hoping. And I was like prepping until the very last second that I could be the mole. Um, and then I wasn't. And I was like, OK, like same strategy. Just be yourself. Yeah, so that's, that's what you would have done as the mole. Uh, you don't think much would have been different or do you think a lot would have changed? I think I would have been even more over the top. And I mean, I I think the best mole is the, the mole that doesn't know they are the mole. So, hmm. so Joy. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting. Um, so that first uh, that first day in the jungle, you have this first task of going out. There's the above ground. There's the below ground. There's the in the water crowd. Uh, you are going to be part of the water squad here. Uh, the team players, as you described it. Um, talk us through your first time doing an actual task on the mole. Um, well, I'd already filmed in the water that we had done some B-roll. So I was like, I knew I like had to go in the water. Like it kind of was like unspoken. Um, and I, so another thing is like, I have like mantras for every day of the week. So that was a Monday. And my mantra for Monday is don't rush. So I was like, I'm just not going to rush through this mission. Um, I'm just going to kind of hang back. And I've actually spent like over like a month of my life in the Amazon rainforest. Oh, Ooh, so, me too. so is Rob. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, let's like, if there's anyone who's going to find this crate, it's me. And I did. Yeah. But none of you found it fast. The crate was like right over there. According to the camera. Is this, well, is this TV magic? Cause it looked like y'all should have found that crate. A little I quicker. mean, I don't want to get like I don't want to get into like the nitty gritty of like what you didn't see, but like what you did see is that my team went past the crate, and the rules of the mission are once you go into the end zone, you have to get out of the water and go all the way around. And we all agreed as a group going into it that after thirty minutes we would open the clue. So mm. I was just repeating back what we all agreed to, but because you know. I don't know, because I was just taking my time. And also, if you look, when they're opening the clue, I never stop looking for the crate. I'm still poking around with my stick. Mm. So what you saw is exactly how it played out. You know, I I wasn't sabotaging that mission. I was going along with the team and I was doing it Greg style. You know, let's make it fun. So you're on that mission with, let's see, you were with Jacob, Casey, and Pranav are on that one. So are these the first three players you feel like you're really getting an immediate sense of? Did you feel like you had enough meaningful time with anyone else up to that point? I guess just like first impressions. Uh, are they already starting to form at this point for you? Um, I thought, I mean, I thought everybody was just so beautiful. Like we had, we did like first impressions um, interviews. And I said about Kasi, I was like, I'm, hypnotized by her beauty, like absolutely hypnotized. And I thought everybody was just so attractive. I mean, I saw Will's bun and I was like, I thought I was gonna be the only one. You were gonna be the bun guy. <laughs> I was very disappointed. But then I saw his jeans and I was like, okay, I'm good. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> uh all right so you you uh, uh the, you, you have thoughts about will's jeans uh and in everybody was wearing white sneakers i thought this was really weird i was like why because we didn't pick out our own outfits so right, i'm course. basically laura croft and everybody else is like american <laughs> eagle outfitters and i was like what What's going on? Yeah. You're here to raid tombs. Everybody else is for Abercrombie and Fitch. Uh, so you're you're gonna you're gonna get through this challenge. The up high team uh, is gonna get the money as well. It is uh, down low. 
uh, where where Joy is unable to navigate everybody towards success in that mission. Uh, and then you have the the overnight. Uh, you have the overnight. You're staying out there in the jungle. And when you awake, there is a case that is missing. Uh, were there any hijinks in the night or any awareness of Will and his genes sneaking off with one of these pelican cases of money? I slept very well. Like a baby. Um, yeah, I slept fine. Um, no, I had no no idea that a, a case was missing at all. Yeah. Um, so the, the case is missing. There's a whole lot of question about what to do here. Eventually, you're going to get uh, the, the banana situation. Well, when the uh, case you're guarding goes, the banana. Yeah, when the case goes missing, I'm well, Tuesday, my mantras relax. So I was like, I'm just going to relax. Like, I was also really, really sick at the time. So I was like, you know, I did a lot yesterday. Like, I'm not going to do this whole improv thing, this amateur improv in the jungle to find the case that I know will we'll eventually find this case. Yeah. I'm just gonna, my character will guard the case. And I literally did. I did not let go of that case until Alex ripped it from my hands. She's like, <laughs> you can give it now. So I I just sat in the plane with the case, eating a banana, and I just let let the ensemble ensemble. Yeah. How was the banana? The banana, I mean, the, the food in the jungle was incredible. I mean, we had, well, the breakfast was better than the dinner. You guys didn't see dinner. Dinner, we just had baked beans and not even baked beans just cans of beans and uh, red wine okay, yeah, so, so that oh. explains the ose situation right? yeah i think so <laughs> those are farting beans no sure. that, when they told us we were sleeping there i i actually thought they were joking because if it rained like we would have been screwed so this is just a theme like a lot of people are watching the mole and they're like well i want this i want that it's like dude like Please, like, it's a miracle that this show even exists. So, yeah. one of those miracles was that it didn't rain. Um, you could, could you, could you tell, like, that the, it's like, Netflix, you know, you're making a show. There's, you could put some more money over here. Did it feel like there was, there was a resource? Are you position? kidding? This is the most, ex this is one of the most expensive reality shows that's been made in the yeah. past, like, three years, especially post pandemic. The oh, I mean, before the mole, there was the pack on Amazon, um, yeah. that mm -hmm. one. We, we, we covered that yeah, episode we covered of that yeah. show, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And then after, I was actually in the finals for the pack season two oh, man. with my no. chihuahua before no. it got canceled. I was gonna yeah. say, there was not a season two of that. No, so I, I thought I was like in, I was in the cast for season two and then it got canceled right before I auditioned for the mole. I feel like this um, worked out. And then the world's mm -hmm. toughest race on Amazon was also a huge budget, then pandemic happened and then we really didn't see internet like housewives stop traveling internationally like this this was a marvel movie like the budget was tremendous so thor except sure for thor the was there <laughs> iron man you got to the avengers headquarters in the amazon in a minute here yeah exactly so yeah. so the the budget was was fabulous like we were treated like royalty so sure. greg you said it was a miracle that it happened uh what was the miracle um I can't, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of the COVID of it all, but like, as soon as we arrived, Australia went into lockdown got because it. four people got COVID because yeah. that's Australia. But I think there was a lot of stuff planned in different areas of the country and the crew really just had to adapt. And I think mm -hmm. seeing what was done was just so amazing and incredible. And it just speaks to how amazing um, the production company is. Nice. Um, okay, so you're, you're going to get choppered out of the jungle. You're going to be taken to Tony Stark's Amazonian or Australian uh, hideaway, as it were. Uh, you're going to find out that Will took the case in the night. They've got the, the late night footage. What did, you, what did you make of all of this? Is your suspicion increasing on Will in this moment? Do you feel like this actually maybe rules Will out? Like, what were some of your initial takeaways when the first sort of real hijinks of the season are ensuing? I was just like, do this. <laughs> That's what was going through Making my mind. Making a surprise face. For the <laughs> I was okay. Just like make faces. You're about to take a quiz. Like be entertaining. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I didn't like, I didn't think the, the, this, I wasn't like that invested in the case to begin with. And then we got the case back. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, like that's cool. Like, 
yeah, I wasn't, I it didn't, yeah, I wasn't really that um, impressed by any of it. Yeah, you didn't have strong thoughts. So you do have to take the, the quiz here pretty soon. This is what, two days into this experience at this point? Like real fast. How do you know what to do? Uh, this early on did you feel like you had like a, a like a decent uh strategy for quiz number one yeah so actually um on <laughs> on my suitcase there was an airplane like neck pillow and it said no molestar on it like <laughs> mole and i was like oh my god there's a pillow on my suitcase i was like whose pillow is this and sandy's like it's mine and I was like, oh, my God, it's a plant. And I was like, she's the mole. So I went all in on Sandy. <laughs> and that's the truth. Yeah. But it said no mole. <laughs> I... Yeah, there you go. Exactly. And yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Sandy had been the mole. That pillow is making that final super cut. Of, uh, <laughs> but the other, the, thing too, the other thing, too, I want to share is that in the jungle, I actually had a dream. And in my dream, I was at um, a dinner party. And at this dinner party, there was someone who showed up in this like kind of eccentric outfit, like with a bandeau, like a bandeau kind of dress. And I made this big scene and I get thrown out of the dinner. And I kind of interpreted that dream in that moment that I shouldn't like make a big deal about where I'm sitting. So in addition, when we all sat down before we took the quiz, Sandy was sitting next to me. And I was like, this is another reason to go all in on Sandy. Mm. Um, so how bad did Ose do on the yeah, quiz? Yeah, that was my next question. went all in on Sandy. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't grading the quiz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah. I think this is the thing too. I think I can feel something and I want to just say this now that I think there's this like idea that like at the beginning of the mole, like you have to split your votes for like probability. And I, and I think that is like the popular thing. And going into this game, I was like, I'm not going to let Reddit tell me, love you Reddit, but I'm not going to let Reddit tell me how to play this game. I'm going to play this game with cojones. At first I was like, I'm going to split and then as soon as I sat down on the quiz, I was like, I think it's Sandy. Like, I'm not going to split my votes. I'm going to go all in. And then on top of that, one of my other strategies was to make sure that the game box kept botting. So in the first, in, at that, right before we take the quiz, you hear me say, tonight is about statistics and probability. Right. I'm just saying that so that the people who are splitting their votes never get the guts to go all in on anyone. Interesting. Okay, so you're trying to play play the play the robots at the table against each other. Yes. Okay. Which is interesting because that's like the inverse strategy of what Professor of Robotics Dr. Hubicki just said on the previous mm. podcast. Yes. He's probot, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I mean, bots are great. Like bots keep botting, botting all day long, but I needed uh, my game was more about like intuition, like just like the, tr the two truths feelings. and the lie of it all. Yeah, dreams, candles, like zodiac, <laughs> moons, like, and I'm not joking. Like, that Rel was what no, I was deeply relatable content. Yeah. Um. So when you're when you're at that dinner, are you are you getting are you getting any kind of read on any of these people in terms of how they're going to be playing? If like you're getting a good handle on sort of like you're going to be playing by intuition, are you already at this first dinner pre-execution number one? sort of starting to suss out who's a human and who who's a robot. I mean, Avery, she tells, she's met a mole. She tells us all what she's doing and she tells us all over and over again. And that was so happening knew, from the jump. Yeah, so I knew, Ave, there's, yeah, there's Avery is what you see is what you get. And I knew that she was going to play the game. And I knew that uh, Pranav and Avery, Pranavery, we're going to do, <laughs> they're just going to share a journal. So that was like two people, check. I know what they're going to do. Yeah. Greg, could we go back to uh, you playing the game basically uh, by instinct and basically uh, you, you're just going to, uh, you know, uh, not rely on instruments and just, uh, you know, uh, use the force, you know, use the force. Do you feel like was that a uh, bad idea to do that way or did you not do it enough? Um, I think there's just so much information and I think if, so like leading up to this, so the backstory is like I was meditating intensely for like two months. I started microdosing um, a little bit. So I had a mm -hmm. nice little, nice little 
concentration in my system while I was there. And I would say all of those things were really helpful tools. And I think also in that, you know, going on a TV show, you open your throat chakra. You're going to say, I'm going to just like say everything that comes to my mind. Wow. And I'm going to open my heart chakra too. I'm going to shine it out so that the audience can just relate to me. But I think once you open this and open that, there's no filter. So my heart chakra was not just open to the audience. It was open to the people around me. So if I'm playing like so vulnerably, once relationships start forming, then it becomes a little hard because I'm I'm emotionally invested in the people around me. You so needed I your could, shields. It, it, I, did, I had no defenses. No yeah. defenses at all. Yeah. Were you finding that your heart was going out to the people around you? Was that interfering? Were you starting to form true bonds? It was. I mean, I mean, like definitely. Um, yeah, I think it was. It was hard not to, and I think it's in my nature. Like, I'm not really a competitive person. Person, it's my nature to be like helpful and like healing. And I just found myself in the game, like still being helpful to the people around me. And I want. And I was like, Greg. Don't do that. Don't do that. And I just, I just couldn't not do it. Cause I was like, this is my family right now, you know? Yeah. Uh, so Osei is the first person from the family to go. We were all devastated over here on the mall patrol. We were sad to, sad to say goodbye to Osei. Any funny Osei stories from behind the scenes? Um, I mean, Osei is just, I, I, I loved watching the first episode. I was like, he helped us. He helped the plane take off. Like he's just so hilarious. And we had a conversation like off camera, just about, he's like an empath and he really had a sense of the people around him. And, and he's really just like an authentic, amazing human being. And I mean, when you go first, everyone has this. So everyone was talking about him. But everyone's like, oh, he's so great. And I was like, oh, my God, he is. But like, you know, he never had a chance to not be great. But I know that if he was there to the end, he would have been great the entire time. Um, so your next task is we have the, the jailbreak uh, where you're all locked away. Uh, and you have to figure your way out of out of the jail. And you are in a very interesting group. You are with Joy. You are with Kasi. Um, observations of the mole during your time in prison with them. Um, I think like I didn't realize I wasn't like. So there was a lot of stuff that happened after that that didn't air. So I'm not going to get into that, but. I wasn't really focused. I didn't realize that I was in the same spot as Pranav and Avery. I didn't think either of the two of them were the mole, but I think just like if I had really been aware that we were in like the you can't do anything spot, like I think that that would have been something that would, would have been really good to pay attention to. But I do remember when um, I was handing the stool to, to Joy, um, Kasi was like really just like, be panicking and running around. I remember saying to her, Kasi, vibes, vibes. I need vibes. Give me vibes. <laughs> but um, the other thing is, though, then she went and got keys that I didn't even know to help us get out of. Like, so so we really, like, Joy and I were both kind of space cadets, and and we wouldn't have gotten out of there without Kasi also. So, yeah. Uh, she held the keys to the to the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, well, she said in the uh, like finale episode that she really wanted to try to be like a superstar at first uh, to make people uh, not think that she was the mole before she ultimately is very moly uh, by the end. Uh, do you, did, was that your feeling about her? Like, do you have any suspicions about Kazi early on? Well, so you know, I told you about my dream. Yes. Um, so actually in between one and two, we got on a plane and Kasi was wearing a bandeau. And at that moment I knew yeah. she was the girl from my dream and I immediately <laughs> registered her as a threat. And I found that anytime I talked to her, I would just like, I would go, when I would talk to her, go, I would have the intention of not like spilling the beans, but she would just ask these questions. Yeah, it's your dinner. I would just open up to her and I was like, Greg, stop doing that. You know, stop doing that. Um, but um, so, so that was what I was, I was knowing that she was a threat and I, I was telling other people that she was a threat. And I actually, I, I, I was, I have my journal right here. I kept 
talking to her so much that I actually wrote a Bart Simpson note to myself that says, avoid the girl from the dream. And it says this about 50 times for those. A million who are times. Yeah. I was like, stop, like, stop being vulnerable around her. So uh, so I, I got that. And then I also found that she was a little bit like wishy-washy when we would make group decisions. She would like say one thing and then like change your mind right away. And I would be like, Cassie, why'd you do that? You know, and she would just ignore me. So I was like, this is weird. Um, a, a cameo appearance from the journal. The journals we really didn't see on the show very much. Were they were they important out there, Greg? Whether just for your own sort of therapeutic value and also just like keeping your information straight, but did they have impact within the game that we didn't see? Um, I I, I think I, I think in seeing season one. And then also I watched, I watched season one and then I didn't watch anything except for the most recent Australian season. Cause I wanted to see like the most recent iteration. And that was just like journal Palooza. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like this journal will be taken away at any moment. So I really didn't write in it that much except for my dreams and anything that I did write, I just ended up like ripping out in like a manic <laughs> episode and like eating or shoving in the toilet well yeah because so, you don't know what they're going to do with it yeah every everybody had journal pages in their butt crack like that was just <laughs> normal because everyone thought their journal would be taken okay um, i'm back on uh, hole patrol yes and actually um since the show Cassie and i have spoken and Cassie said she did see my journal and she had read about my dreams oh so, that's gonna be a little Cassie. unnerving. Wow! Yeah, How did she I was pull like, that what? off. I was yeah. Like, oh. Well, yeah, there were moments where our journals were taken away from us, but not in like any kind of. So in the end, like you, you, the audience. I just want to bring it back. The audience didn't miss anything with the journals. Like the audience, you guys are good. Like we're not cheating you out of fun journal play. Um, but yeah, there were journals we wrote in them, um, and uh, yeah, I mean maybe we can. I don't know. Paywall my journal, and we can oh, all get a cut. Sounds fun. Uh, yeah, please. We'll talk <laughs> offline. Um, this, this, so the jailbreak uh, is going to lead into something that I really want to get your take on, obviously. But there is one thing here on the jailbreak that I do also want to take this as an... So they say that it, uh, the final team gets in there, and there's like two seconds on the clock, and then they roll in. It's like, yeah, you made it just under the wire. And all season long, Greg... It's coming down to those final two seconds. Things were close. You know, things are real. Were they really that close? I think with the, ex I would say they were really that close. I mean, the mountain, I don't know, because I kind of showed up at the end. Yeah. Um. So I don't really know what was going on in the mountain. But like, I mean, what are you going to do? They're like, you just made it. You won this. I'm like, okay, like, that's fine. Yeah. Like, I, I have no, I, I, I think, you know, and, and I think even, even like um, you're watching it and it's like, Five more minutes, five less minutes. Trust me, being there was even more confusing. I had mm. no idea what had even gone on. I was locked in my room with my stool the whole time, and that was it. So oh. I, I just had to Kinda believe like what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Sad. Very good. Very good. Listen, it's where um, we're at this evening. It's absolutely true. Okay, so let's get into the uh, eternal battle of Sector Thirty One versus sector 45 the button challenge which uh we all loved very very dearly and you're a star in the button challenge greg this was good stuff talk us through your experience with the button challenge i mean my favorite moment of the button challenge is i try to have a team meeting and then avery just runs away and i think that is that you'll see this continue on when greg says hey let's powwow and we make a plan the mission goes well when someone just says, this is what we're doing, and then makes a decision, then things don't go so well. So this is, file this note away, but Avery and Pranav run away. And I'm just like, okay, like I'll sit by this phone and I will just do my thing. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, because I knew that there was no stopping them, I had to go along with it. And it was, my strategy was radical honesty. I was not going to lie, but in the context of this mission, I had to lie. I had no choice. 
Yeah. Uh, did anyone, uh, did you feel like you had any of them on the other line, like really believing that you were doing this for the good of the land, the good of the realm was first I and foremost? I had no idea that they were actually believing me. When I, when I watched the show, like this was the first time I was like, oh my God, like I really had them. Like that was wild. And then when I watched, and then I could, you could see, as some people picked up on this the second time, people think that I kind of threw it on purpose, that I was like kind of bored. And I was like, let's just, you know, be a little too obvious. And that's the truth. Yes, I was, I was kind of bored. I was alone in this room. <laughs> I was like, let's just throw it. And then <laughs> Pranav doesn't eat, first of all, Pranav doesn't lie. I'm like, you're on the mole. You kind of have to lie. Like he didn't. He didn't have the guts to lie to the other team, but that's okay. We love Pranav. He's a very, very nice guy. And then Casey, like, oh my God. Like, yes. I can't. Disappears. And, then, and then Pranav and Avery don't even solve the puzzle. Like, we all needed to wait for this clue. So all my work was just for nothing. So whatever. This Great is a television, question, though. Question in the chat from Angus, who is watching right now. Uh, Angus says, do you know why Casey didn't get the rest of the team for the phone call when Casey is sent off to assemble the Avengers? And like, we need to all say hi in unison. Uh, how did that oh, uh, communication get uh, mismanaged? I could, Casey has, Casey can have like a very like scattered energy at times. So I think that, you know, even to the audience, it seems very obvious, but like I was mouthing something and I was going like this. So I don't, I mean, I, I don't know what she was doing, but um, in, she did come back into the room and she started ripping things off the wall. So we were all, it was really, really weird at the end. I was like, I don't know what Casey's doing, but I don't think she did that intentionally at all. Yeah. Um, okay, so when we're done with the button challenge, uh, we're going to move on to uh, the Colby Classic, the Great Barrier Reef, uh, <laughs> and it's going to be, we're going to get into the treasure chest mission, but first, we get the moral dilemma, Greg, uh, and the- I want to uh, rewind a little bit. Yeah, let's I do think, that. I think the producers included a really good moment when me and, me and Thor are driving in, I say- if I don't drive, I get car sick. And, and Thor says, I'm the same way. And I think that is kind of the metaphor of what you see. Two, two men who want to be in the driver's seat. Yes. Um, so I just and mommy to... and daddy, I think also. Yes. yes. You and Pranav were mommy and daddy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, okay, yes. The dossier, right, so, well, the dossier so you're, dilemma. You're in the driver's seat of the dossier dilemma. And you choose to go down Dossier Drive uh, and you're going to look at it. And I think from our perspective, Jess, I don't think any one of us was like, someone's going to look. Like, very clearly, someone's going to look. That had to be the vibe out there. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I thought I thought everybody was going to look. Um, I yeah. thought since the button, like, it's just, you know, we need to study for the quizzes. Like, we need to have evidence. We need to have thoughts. But, but not everybody thinks that so yeah. so you look what'd I you look. see well first i looked at my own um because <laughs> because okay so this is a little like this is a little complicated and a little bit narcissistic but at this point in time like i hadn't shared like i told everyone that i was like single and i was actually separated from my husband i was going through divorce at the time so i really wanted so i was i was lying to the group and i wanted to see what was in my own dossier. So that was one priority. And then I looked at um, uh, Joyce. I wanted to see if she really was a pilot and she is a pilot. Um, and I wanted, I also looked at um, Sandy's and I also looked at Cossie's as well. Okay. Um, so you were limited in how many you could look at. We had a time limit. So I could look at as many as I wanted and I could have copied all the information in my journal if I fit in the right amount of time. Okay, so you look at yours, you look at Joy's, you look at Sandy's, and who else? Cossie's. Okay, and so did you mm -hmm. get anything useful out of the mole uh, when you looked at the mole's dossier? I thought it was, it said Cossie was fluent in Mandarin, but she never spoke Mandarin around us, um, and I still have never heard her speak Mandarin to this day. So I thought that was interesting. Interesting. Hmm. Um, now, Greg, was that information useful to you on any level at any point during the game? So I think 
taking it a few steps back when they gave us like our intake quiz where they're like answer these 100 questions about yourself i had actively worked to memorize what all of those questions were and then once i got into the game and i had all my materials taken away i immediately just from memory copied down all those questions into my journal um so i was already operating on a place of knowing what i needed to talk about with everybody so there actually wasn't a lot in the dossiers um, that I didn't either know or needed to ask. So it was, I was a little bit, I don't know what I was expecting. So I would say the information um, wasn't that useful. But I think if, had I had known, you know, Kasi is definitely the mole, then I would have been like, oh, let me copy down her zip code right now. Yeah. <laughs> and also you probably would have won the whole thing. Or not. Oh, okay. Oh, well, interesting. More interesting. on that later. Okay, okay. Uh, Zed, you just saw this in the chat. Uh, Andrew had this comment. Uh, looking at your own is obviously the correct move. You need to see how accurate it is. And you were building on that a bit, Zed. Yes, and I said, I think that's useful uh, to see if people have information about you that you haven't shared, and then you know that they've looked in the dossiers as well. Because did it come up that Avery had also looked? Because on the show, oh, obviously, yeah, it really does just meal. get painted as you're the only one. Yeah. Like, of course, in, in, in Avery you're the shit style, dossier mole, and that's it. Yeah, in, in Avery, in true Avery style, she told us all that she looked. So <laughs> we did know. Of course, we knew that she looked. Um, yeah. So that was, but she blamed it on me she, at the time. She said, "I only looked because I went after Greg, Greg, and all the dossiers were so messy." And then I, I was feeling like, "Did I leave it a mess?" And then when I watched the show. It was all in a stack when she walked in. So I think she was talking about like the way the paper clips were put on, but I think that was just like an aesthetic, like kind of like I don't know, Caribbean. very ticky tack. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, <laughs> hmm. okay. Um, all right, so it's now treasure hunting time, and I guess what I want to know is what was up with the life jacket diaper. Um, this is the well, top question I don't... that I have about this moment in time. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> um, let's just say I am in the maritime industry. I've worked on ships for two years. I'm going on a cruise for work tomorrow. Ooh. So there's nothing I know more about than boats. And I would say in the group, I was the resident boat expert and I was the resident find a crate in the water expert as well. Um, at that time in the mission, I put on the life jacket like this, so I could have full use of my arms for holding things. And also when you're diving down and going back up, having a life jacket that you could slip on and off allows you to tread water without using, you could, you could just float, gather your breath, and then take the life jacket off and dive down. So I, when I saw it, I like didn't even remember putting it on like that, but quickly uh, I realized that that was the right decision to do. It looked weird at the time, but um, I, I stand by that decision. 100%. It was terrific television. Even if we didn't know your motive behind it, it's just, this is great. Well, it's interesting too, that this is the one mission that I don't get to narrate. Yeah. So what's your perspective on this mission? Cause it gets a little dicey uh, among the, the boat team. Will my, Will starts bleeding and then Will can't do stuff anymore. My perspective is, you know, if a landlocked person foaming at the mouth from pre-workout appoints himself as the leader and gets hurt within the first 10 minutes, I think it speaks for itself. I mean, um, Thor was concerned with doing Thor things and looking like Thor in the water, and he... He didn't. He didn't pull it off. You know, we were one man down. So we all had to pick up the slack. And then when he got back on the boat, all he did was yell at us. And you could see when Casey gets the crate, I celebrate and he does not. So it was it was a reckless ego that really sunk our team to the bottom of the Great Barrier Reef, mm -hmm. which wasn't, in fact, a pool in Las Vegas, which I think Thor 
would have felt more at home. Oh, <laughs> all right. Now, uh, did you take any coral back from the Great Barrier Reef that you need to report at any time? Or... Oh, honey, I was barely in that water. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it was answer. such a great moment in the show uh, when uh, you know Will has been injured. He wants to get back in the water and he can't. Uh, and then you are just uh, belaboring the fact that uh, well. If you weren't so reckless, you could have been in the water right now. I was, I mean, I really regret the way that I was speaking to my team. And after that mission, I apologize to everyone individually um, because that's not how a leader should act. Like I shouldn't be sassy with people. Um, I was emotionally triggered for other reasons outside of the show. Um, if you look at my contestant profile, the only thing you learn about me is that I survived a, a huge storm at sea. So there is lingering trauma from that experience that all bubbled to the surface. Maybe I should have done what Joy did. You know, Joy's like, I don't want to hear what these fools have to say about me on a plane. I'm going on the boat. And I should have been like, <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to go on the plane yeah. and just like be nauseous with Avery. That looked like fun. What she was doing was really fun. Well, she was so. doing she was doing a lot of the 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 self sabotage, right? Like she's trying to <laughs> she doing a lot of nothing. She's doing a lot of not nothing. seeing the dinghy, a lot of dropping oxygen tank. We heard about that tank that she dropped <laughs> more than you are I heard about that tank all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Constantly. Tanking the challenge. Uh were you doing any at this point any uh self sabotage type stuff, Greg? I, or did I that not honestly... go in the spirit of the radical honesty? I would say that it was 90% competency, 10% I don't give a fuck. So uh -huh. I think the I don't give a fuck energy was like yeah. you felt that in the audience. We're like, this guy doesn't really care. But when it came down to it, like I'm a prideful, arrogant person. So I'm going to do my best and I want the world to see, you know, gay excellence, period. Yeah. Um, so the moral dilemma continues when you're done here. Uh, you get the one crate. It's the $2,000 crate. The prize pot now, for now, is at $28,000, $500. Uh, you've got, uh, you got a, almost 30 k in there. Very close. And it is all about to disappear uh, as we're going to go through with the rest of the moral dilemma and that the people whose integrity is going to get them into the position to yada, 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 who opened the dossier, Joy bets 25,000, she names you. Talk us through your whole experience with all of this. This is one of the most electric moments of the season for sure. I mean, obviously I told Joy that I looked like... Hey, was this I, a secret to anyone or were you like no yeah, I, the dossier, I, I walked out, everybody saw me i walked out of the dossier room like crying i was like all of a sudden i was like very upset i was thinking about my relationship i was like yeah oh my god like everybody's gonna know i'm going through a breakup like a lot of like you know like unhinged narcissism but at the same time like so when the group says we knew greg was gonna look it's not because there's this inherent sinister like duplicitous about me it's because they all knew that i looked so yeah. everybody had the opportunity to bet on me and joy went the highest so more power to her yeah it sounds like based on uh how you're describing some of the people out there like everyone would know an avery looked probably too right like just like the the gamer bot type stuff yeah i mean everybody either bet on me or avery yeah yeah that makes so sense. Then is there an alternative uh, viewing of this where D Joy just knew everybody was going to uh, to pick you and had to go ahead and just put like an outlandish number out there to make sure that she was the one who was going to get the exemption? Um, n nobody discussed anything with anyone. There is no like there were no comparing notes. And um, Joy told me after she made the bet before she found out if she got it right or not. And she was really, really, really distraught about it. And she felt really bad about doing it. And it was weird that like, you know, I was like, we were helping each other emotionally get through this because the reaction was a lot worse than what you see. Like all, everybody on that couch was like, actually like yelling at her. And I was like, this is, this is just the most wild thing I've seen. Like, you know, it's not real money. Like it's pretend money in a pot, you know? Like if you're not gonna win, it's not your money. You know, you can relax now, you can sit down. Yeah, so people were mean about it. People yeah. were mean. People were mean about it. Uh, well, I hope we can talk to Joy at some point. Like, well, 
I hope we could be nice about it. I was defending her. I, I wish you guys could see. I was like defending her. I was like, if it was like, yeah, but I just sat there and the audience didn't see that. And I mean, in the end, like it doesn't, I think in the end, like the show isn't about like our individual relationships as much. Like it would be so interesting, but I'm, I'm Different kind show. of on an island throughout the show. And um, I think they really wanted to use that, that sound bite where I was like, nobody's looking at me. This is great. You know? And that was how I felt at the time. Like nobody it was good. That's you know? what happened. Yeah. <laughs> it was what epic. I loved it. Uh, all right. So Dom gets knocked out here at this quiz, but Maybe not, because there's this chance once you go into the mining town of Ravenswood, which is famously rich in gold, y'all go to the bar and you get a phone call from Dom. He says, hey, I need you all to answer some questions. And if you answer the questions, I'll be able to come back into the thing. And it seems like maybe that's going to happen. And then the room turns uh, against Dom. How how quick did that happen? The show made it look like this was sort of Sandy leading the charge. You had the line of like, whoa, Sandy never speaks unless spoken to, I have here in my notes in this moment. Uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, so first of all, there will be no more Sandy slander on this <laughs> podcast. Sandy <laughs> is What do you iconic, mean? I... <laughs> I mean, I've listened to this podcast. <laughs> hmm. I would That's say good. by the time by the time got by the time Sandy don't forget went to out, leave a rating and review. When Sandy <laughs> when Sandy went out, three people thought she was the mole, like very close. Wow. So that you don't get to see. And the other thing is that it was just like a group consensus. I mean, I remember just grabbing the walkie-talkie and turning it off and like throwing it out the window. And they're like, no, you have to talk about this for a long period of time. So what you see on TV isn't quite exactly how it went down, but we did come to an agreement very quickly that it's just, um, that it just wasn't worth it. And also we were just like really jazzed about agreeing on something like at this point like there had just been so much like to, i was like we did this like we all agreed to not win money and i felt like that was a step <laughs> that was really good for morale honestly. especially on like the morning after the heist uh of uh of the pot from joy like and you're all continuing like no let's just keep not making money like that had to be something of a bonding experience. I mean, yeah. I mean, I have a job. Like, I, I have a full time job. I was okay just keeping yeah. the pot low. Like, I'm. That's okay, you know. It's a television I, show. I'm, I'm the vibes guy. Good vibes and low pot is more important. Like, Hashtag anything. good vibes. We love it. Um, okay, was there anyone? I mean, it looks like Will is maybe like this sucks. Let, let Dom come back. Was that real? Was there anyone in the room that was kind of like, come on? I mean, do you guys want the tea? Yeah, of course. You're on the yes, podcast. Please. Yeah. So let's do yeah. this thing called immunity necklace. So if I say immunity necklace, you can't judge me for what oh, I say. Okay. I'm just telling you the truth. The word on the street is that Will and Dom weren't even speaking at that point. So Ooh. for Will to make it all about Dom wasn't really what was going on. So it was a little bit, the bro code was broken way before that mission and the only people that stood by their votes who really were like, let's bring him back were Joy and Kasi. Okay. Immunity necklace off. Oh my okay. gosh. All right. There's uh, this. I thought it was uh, th uh, Iron Man and Captain America that yeah. had the Civil War, Rob. Yeah. Was there a falling <laughs> out between them that, that you knew about? I don't know what happened. You want to put the necklace back on real quick? Yeah. <laughs> no, because I thought I also had read that like, oh, like, um, you know, uh, it was like Will follows every single person on the season on Instagram except for Dom and vice versa. I mean, you'll have to ask them. I have no idea what happened or why. It, all I, I just I just knew at that point that, you know, I'm. I'm the focus group moderator. I'm very aware of what all the little dynamics are going on. So this wasn't, I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying this as observations and maybe yeah. my observations were incorrect. Um, okay, so he's not allowed back to the game. Could you hear him bellow Melbourne from the car though? <laughs> Um, no, uh, I didn't. I mean, I love Dom. Nice. He's he's a really nice guy. But at this point, I, it's exactly what I said. Like, we don't want to take a step back. We want to keep moving forward. 
we want to do real missions for real money. We don't want to chase our tails. So let's just keep it moving. All right. So then it's time to go gold digging. Uh, so it's time for the bank heist. And you are part of the gold squad. Uh, did you enjoy your entrapment moment of having to do the laser dancing? Getting through I loved the lasers? it. Yeah. And I think yep. what you don't see is before that, like basically it's it's boat team again. My swapping Jacob for Kossi. And we really like, we really worked hard to get a good vibe going. And we did. And everybody worked hard on that. And I was so looking forward to the lasers. Like when I auditioned, I was talking about lasers. So I was like, this in is. In what just... context? I was like, <laughs> if I get on the mole, I'm going to go past lasers and go. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Like that's what I said. This is a prediction. And they were like, okay, Greg, we'll make that happen. Do you think that they made it happen in response to you talking about lasers? Or do you think lasers were already part of the menu? You know, Josh, this is what happens when you manifest and you microdose. You know, yeah. <laughs> what cause and effect is not yeah. like if I dream it, it's happening. Maybe we're all just doing it together at the same time. Oh. Right. Because it's like the theme of the mission was kind of like Old West bank vault. Yeah, like really it kind of made no like sense <laughs> that they had like, a laser enabled laser. security system. Oh. I think it did make sense because actually Australia is really known for their mining and their gemstones and their gold and their diamonds and their opal. And I originally, when we auditioned, one of the questions we got was like, Are, do you know anything about gemstones? So I actually did a lot of research about gold and diamonds and opal, like to prepare me for missions that never existed. Yeah, so I wasn't do with this one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I loved the lasers. It was, it was just, it was great. I wish we just, we, let's just only do lasers for that mission. Let's just well, move yeah, on. It's, I was going to say, like, it's, it's nice that you have something nice to hang on to as a memory from that one. Cause otherwise you're just uh, running the clock for 45 minutes doing jack shit. Uh, nothing. I mean, all um, around, right? I mean, the mission, it was a little bit different than what you see. I think, I am very transparent. Like people think, oh, like he's so arrogant. Like we had a book too. So we oh. also we also saw the names. We saw a lot more names. Kasi had a smaller list. We had a much longer list. So it, it I felt bad. I didn't see it. So I I really I felt bad. And also what you don't really see in the mission is that all of Kasi's communication is going through Casey. And on the other team, all of Pranav's communication is going through Sandy. Yeah. So we were, we a lot of like that kind of frazzled Casey energy. We weren't quite sure whether it was Casey, Casey or, or Casey. It was Casey or it was both of them. And is that so, a, a, like a stipulation of the mission that she can only talk to one person and that person's your conduit or it was just, it, it was, was like who gets way. the walkie talkie and I'm coming like off, the of, I'm coming off of the phone. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Casey, take the walkie talkie. Yeah. Um, so did you see G locks? K Midas, all these I uh, think fabulously that, yeah. wealthy individuals. I mean, there were so many. We, our book was like twelve pages. It was yeah. so many names, and it was like even like getting the the keys to open the door was like a whole system. So I was kind of, I I was the one who figured out how to open them actually. So I was proud of myself for that. Um, but um, I can't do it all. I really no. can't. No. I mean, I think something that's really fun about the lasers is it is evocative of the original mole and that spy craft that we've been talking about and how we kind of missed those elements is it is like, ooh, you have to do this sneaky thing and not just, okay, solve this arbitrary puzzle or do this arbitrary kind of obstacle course type task. It is more like that Mission Impossible kind of idea uh, right after we lost Dom Cruise. Um that is so it can be cheesy because the show takes itself kind of seriously in the early seasons, but I think is also what is really endearing about it. Yeah. And everybody was wearing pastels as well. <laughs> which was weird. Yeah. Um, all right. So you, you don't get anything from the gold. Uh, we do not get anything from the, from the, the cash counting crew either. This is where Avery's starting to tell us that she's a little suspicious of Jacob. Do mm -hmm. you have any, any, uh, Jacob thoughts at this point in time? You're going to bust him on a big lie in a, a couple episodes from here. Um, I mean, at the dinners, Jake, we all had one drink. Jacob had two or three. So I was like, he's not the mole. 
Yeah. <laughs> Unless he'd like, uh, like sort of like. Sorry, Jacob. Him, Jacob's so. fun. Jacob's yeah. really fun. And he's a really nice guy. And he's really nice to look at too. But as I was watching everybody drinking and I was like, Jacob, you are not the mole. Yeah. Interesting. If anyone had more than one drink, they couldn't be the mole. Absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, producers, if you're the mole, you could be waking up, woken up in the middle of the night. So you can't be like puking in the toilet and they're like, hey, like time to work. So I that was a giveaway for me that Jacob was not the mole. That's a good, that's okay. a good tell. So at this point in the game, do you have a strong suspicion of who you think the mole is? At this point in the game, I'm going all in on Sandy for every single quiz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, turns out uh, Sandy goes here. Uh, and that was a shock to me. It was a shock to Will. It was a shock to Pranav. It really shook up the game. And also Sandy's like one of my closest friends from the show. Like she's really, really, really a sweet, amazing person. And I think as like the nice people leave, the game gets more intense. So this was definitely a turning point for a lot of people. Sandy's elimination. Yeah. Uh, so Sandy is gone. And then are you are you kind of like, rudderless are you without uh, a life jacket to to wear in the middle of the ocean i'm kangaroo roadkill i'm just i i <laughs> I, I, I you know look at as a viewer you're like oh this is a really good thing like you thought your your mole suspect is gone but in the moment i was like this game was so fun like all i needed to do was just hang out with my best friend and ask her about what emojis she likes and what she puts on her tacos <laughs> and her Zodiac sign. And she's a cancer and her favorite emoji is the black moon and her favorite beer is Dos Equis. So it was really fun. And I was like, this was just like a very delusional world, but it, it, I wasn't going home. So I was like, what happens now? Like, it was really scary. Yeah. Um, so then that puts you in, uh, you go to the rural town of Gimpy, the vital male <laughs> hub uh, known as Gimpy, uh, and you have to do the, the historic mail train of the Mary Valley, and you have to, you get on the train, other people are on foot, they're running, there's Joy and Jacob, they're in the car, and you're having to just like take the stick and take the bags off of this whole thing, this weird, was it hard? You didn't was seem to have much of an issue. First of all, I want to say that I asked for consent to be the leader. I said, do mm -hmm. you guys mind if I take the lead? Which is how people in the professional world function, but in the mold. like we Or all, should. It should mm -hmm. function. Um, it was very hard. And uh, I mean, I make it look easy um, because that's what I do. But um, <laughs> it uh, it was really, really difficult. And I, I don't, I mean, maybe I should have just not let Kasi do it, you know, but looking back, it, I think it was important for us to see that happen. So, but was it difficult to a degree that when Kasi is, is blowing it and she's like not able to use the tool correctly and get the bags, um, is that raising alarms for you in a major, major way? Well, kind of what I say in my interview is at this point, like she's like, Granted, from the first mission, credit to Kasi, from being in the up high group, she had this like glow. They're like, Kasi can be in a harness. And none of us even saw that mission, but it was something we all just remembered, you know, that she is, and she's a volleyball player, but also like she, she would, she was just like, would, yeah, she would just throw that. We didn't know what she was doing. Like we knew she was smart, but she also was screwing things up. So, but also I, 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 you know, to my own fault, I think highly of myself. I'm like, maybe I can just do this and, and she can't, you know? So, but but since the show, Immunity Necklace, Kasi has actually told me that she really was trying. I mean, it looks like the kind of thing that it, you could believably be trying and believably mess up. Because if it falls, what are you going to do? It fell. Yeah, so I mean, and, and the, the crazy thing, the, like my throat chakra was so open, as soon as she misses it, I like literally say to the camera, I go, why, oh, why did I let her do that? Uh -huh. But I but it just went out my brain. I just said it and didn't even remember it because because things move very fast in the bowl. So and you, on a you, train. Yeah, and on a train. But I, I loved being on the train. I'm not going to run. And why were there three runners? Good question, Zed. Why were there three runners? Well, originally, Casey actually volunteered to be the runner because Casey is a runner. But okay. at that point, um, 
our leader did not want Casey in the running group. So he wanted to come up with a reason to not have Casey there. And that was Avery. Um, so there you go. Okay. Um, I Going back to the train for one second. When the bag falls, Kazi, sa- Kazi starts yelling at you to pick up the bag. Was there any chance on earth you could have possibly picked like, up the bag? Or- no, there was, there was no, maybe if it was a little bit closer, but there really was no way to get it without falling off the train. Um, so would they yeah. have stopped the train to put you back on it or they have <laughs> kept the train going? I follow the rules. You they lost $10,000 and a team member and a team member who fell off. The train I wasn't, in no, I was in this, uh, obliques, all, all bleaks, <laughs> bleaks all day. No yeah, way. I'm yeah. not jumping off any train. And also this was from the beginning, like from the first mission when we were in that, the, the raging rapids, like you didn't see them. There were raging rapids there and they pushed us really far. And I was like, I'm just like not going to get hurt. And then I saw people get hurt on the boat. And I was like, actually like crying after that. I was like, this was the most dangerous thing I've ever experienced, not because of me, but because of who everybody was listening to. And so I, by the time I'm in the train, I was like, I'm not getting hurt. I'm here to be till the end. I don't want to go home because of an injury, you know? I'm, I'm over 30 years old, you know? Things just break and don't go back to the way they are. Mm. Don't have to tell us twice. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're all in that boat. We're there. Um, okay. It is a big boat. A lot of people on this boat. Uh, all right, so... Wear a life jacket in the boat. <laughs> okay, and now I know Around how to wear it, too. Upside yes. down, yeah. Yes. Good. And a diaper. Um, so this must have, regardless of how, you know, it's not a perfect win, but you do add 11000 to the prize pot. And so finally you have, you know, some money again uh, in the game. Morale must have been on the upswing in this moment. No, enough to get everybody excited to eat an Australian pea pie and guzzle down an apple cider vinegar carbonated beverage. No, I mean, they, they, we had a party. We got to the farm and there was a blanket with brie and champagne and we had this whole like Greg you did it like picnic and it was so fun and morale was amazing and they're actually ugh, I don't want to I'm like not supposed to say things that you didn't say but there was a lost mission um on top of the train where I had to single-handedly retrieve a bag worth five thousand dollars while the train was moving so I had so when to you call- say on top of the train you literally mean you were like, yes, mission in impossible. In to, yeah. yeah. Yes. Drones following me, me crawling on a moving train. I was like, it was insane. Like I was crying after. I was like, gay kids from all over the world will see this. Like and, oh. and that doesn't, because that makes me less, that, that if you see that, you're like, this person's definitely not the mole. So I understand why it got cut. Um, but, but it was, so that energy was at this picnic as well. So I was really, really feeling myself at this picnic. I'm like, you guys, like, I am back. Like, forget about that boat. Like, I'm here to win money for the pot. Have you been sent any video or photographic evidence of you on top of the train crawling? No, around? no, nobody. They're they're gaslighting me like it never even happened. That's terrible. <laughs> I don't like that for you. Trust me. It was a micro dose. This happened. I dislike this for you. Uh, that's great, though. Um, okay, so then you do get to the, the C4 table. So when you get to the C4 table, you're already full of brie at this point. This is important for me. I don't know why. Um, I would say, you know, it's not... It takes a long time to make TV. So I would uh-huh. say, okay. you know, <laughs> timelines Sometimes are a little has fuzzy wuzzy. I mean, Sometimes time has passed. Something that you don't see is that like where we're staying and our digs were all filmed. Like we were like, oh my God, like these are our rooms. Like I'm rooming with this person. And like, it was like a whole, and we had to like react to the rooms every single time. Like it was selling sunset and mm-hmm. we screamed, we hugged. We were like, this is the best bed I've ever seen, but it never, it never made it. So we stayed overnight at the farm and then we woke up the next day to do this mission. Okay. Uh, and so this one, this is where you've got the pressure trigger on the chairs there's the exemption that's in play at the end of it and you kind of just have to suss out who's actually eating uh the stuff that's being described who isn't uh you made it to the drinking round right yeah but i mean isn't it interesting that casey wait no is it interesting that pranav gets voted out then casey then me and then that's the order of the eliminations oh yeah Mm. that's very interesting 
Um, yeah, I mean, the rules kind of confused me, but once I tasted the wasabi, I was like, it's not very relevant to me because I'm, I'm not long for this. I'm world. radical honesty and this apple cider, I can't chug, period, let yeah. alone apple cider vinegar. So I knew that I might, I would not last long at that table. Was anyone seeming to enjoy themselves? Um, Will, Will, Will's a big man and he loves being fed. So I was happy for Will that he got to eat the food that he wanted to eat. Yeah. Uh, the cash eventually blows up, but only because Alex wanted to blow up the cash. You did actually win it. $15,000. Uh, Joy does not take the exemption. Alex is sad because she wanted to blow up the bomb. So she blows it up. Anyway, can you talk to us about Alex and how you felt about Alex as host and your time out there with Alex? Alex was gr Alex was great. I mean, we she she spent a lot of time with us when the cameras were on, and we, you know, I I welcomed her into the group by telling her that she looked like Dora the Explorer's mom, and she told me that the humidity was doing great things for my hair, and we kind of had that friendly, sassy banter that um, coastal elites tend to have, and it was wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. Also, a lot of people in that boat. Uh, uh, literally, all of us. Yeah, great. We love it. <laughs> it was great, and she always looked amazing. Her outfits were amazing. Her hair was amazing. I thought she was uh, an excellent, excellent choice for a host. And I don't know why she won't follow any of us on Instagram. Oh, Alex. she's not. Please, oh, she's Alex, trying to keep some us. separation. It's she's her job. Out of the bag right. now. It's you know. not a secret. You know, like, uh, be yeah. friends. I yeah. mean, she deals with like news and like important things. And so then, did Anderson mm -hmm. Cooper. Yeah, sure. I yeah. mean, I guess I don't know if he's following any of them on Instagram either. But yeah. another time, another time, we can check yes. that out. Yeah, um, I'm sure, he's keeping up with uh, <laughs> Bill and yeah, Jim. Yeah, I, I just and, meant it was and another gang. time. Yeah, Anderson, thank you for the follow back. Um, <laughs> oh. Okay, so episode six, the Mountain Mole. Uh, and Pranav is taken out here. Does he follow Dennis Rodman? Oh, I don't know. Um, all right, Pranav is gone here, Greg. Uh, were you sad about Pranav? Were you close with Pranav? Uh, Pranav and I were very cool, and I I really like Pranav. And we just got off the phone today. We Facetime today, so I was I was sad to see Pranav go. I was relieved. Um, to not have to listen to him talk anymore because he's mm -hmm. very long-winded. Pranav, I love you. But um, it was just sometimes... Like he was the only person guess. that the producers came in from, from behind and they were like, stop talking. Um, so... <laughs> so he's going but on for a minute. He would go on and on and on. But I think... His throat we, chakra was also open. I know. Open. We, our, our throats were shining on each other. Uh -huh. it's, just, it's just deep throat chakra opening going yes. on here. But it was, it was really, really, like the friendship that Pranav and Avery had formed up until that point was extremely charming. And I think as one of the elders in the group, me, Joy, and Casey were the crotchety old people. Um, and I think people are saying there needs to be more, trust us, we were very crotchety. Like we were very, very crotchety and there need, old. There needed to be more crotchety people. I then. know, we did the best that we could. We Greg, you and I are the same age. We're the youngest people on this podcast. So that's a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I was, I was I really really felt for Avery and that was like a very genuine moment that we had and we were surprised to see him go because he was was a resident game bot you know he was bot bot body bot and I didn't think that he was the mole also but it was it was shocking because this was the only time that the third to last person saw their screen light up Every other time, it was the second to last person. So when when Pranav got his notification, we thought that he was safe. Right. So the flow was disrupted, and so it was a that was a shock. That was a shock. Yeah. Uh, how were those uh, those those phones when they would light up and they'd be green and red? I mean, I'm I'm thankful that they don't. They're not using in the show the same sound that we heard. And I am. Is that in your dreams now? The I'm noise? so traumatized yeah. by that sound, and I can't <laughs> even remember it. But I never. I thought the phones. I thought the phones were pretty cool, um, to be honest. But mm -hmm. um, I will say the the more significant tell than the phones were the tea lights that were on the table. I don't know if you guys catch this, but anytime there were tea lights on the table, 
the tea light that was in front of the person who would be eliminated actually did go out spontaneously on its own. Avery can attest to this. The only proof that we have now is right before Jacob goes home, there is a production photo that he has posted to his Instagram. And if you look, the tea light closest to his phone is out. Mm. So say what you will about dossiers and briefcases and money, but it's the tea lights. That Spilling really the tea interesting here on RHAP. Uh, we love to hear it. You then embark upon the longest of days, at least as far as the show conveys to us. If there were longer days, you'd have to let us know. 3.17 in the morning, you wake up for the majestic Blue Mountains. Uh, and so you're going to be on this, this mountain trek, uh, but you're not because you get to leave and stay behind pretty early on. Yeah, uh, I was not surprised we were going there because I actually studied um, Amazing Race Australia before oh. I went and they filmed at this exact hotel Jess, and in the mountains. Jess's expertise. Mm, so I thought... Language. I. I studied that show before I came because it's the same production company too. So I had already known exactly where we were going. So I was mm -hmm. very excited to go there. Yeah. yeah. And Just I guess I studied the, another, another example of me studying the wrong show. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, and then were you disappointed that you didn't really participate? Or, or had you studied enough to know that you'd rather stay inside? So, okay. So the backstory is that like I... I wish, I mean, this is not fun to watch, but I actually was like very about like everybody in the group getting the chance to like do fun things. And at this point I had already done the train. And so I was like, I'm not gonna take somebody's spot. I've hiked before, I've done all these stuff before. So I really, the main, main, main reason I stayed back was to give some of the girls a chance to like look like badasses. And I, I wanted that for them. Um, and especially, yeah, so I actually um, stayed back and I was okay staying back. That was fine with me. Yeah. Um, did you have any feeling that maybe you had the money or you were unconcerned about any of that? So if you, when the mission started, when, when the moment Alex introduced the mission, they had lined us up and we were all in these positions and like we, the positions that we're in for continuity are like very important. Like it's always like, go back to the spot, you know, when we're filming. Um, so, so I got, at that point I was paying very close attention and in that position, and you could see it on the show, three backpacks are on the ground. Casey's backpack was on the ground, Joy's backpack was on the ground, and Avery's backpack was on the ground. So I took it as I right away, I was like, the three backpacks that are on the ground are the ones with the money. And I stood by that the entire time. So I, I stayed back because I believed that the money was in those three. Okay, interesting. Um, so Kasi is back with you and there was money in Kasi's backpack, of course. Uh, was that were you were still feeling a little fishy about Kasi at this point? Um, yes, I I was feeling fishy about Kasi. Um, I at this point I had coined the term Kasi proofing the mission. I know you hear Joy say it, but actually I was saying that a lot. Um, and I would say it to the group in front of the group all the time. Um, luckily, in front of Kasi? I, I would say we need to Kasi proof the mission. So when when we stayed back, part of our mission that you don't see is we are actually navigating the group to their their point but we did that successfully so it didn't make the show there was no opportunity for sabotage because i didn't let costi do anything i said you sit here i will do all the navigating i will do all the talking and this mission will be costi proofed um so that was that was my mo at that point i was like every mission must be costi proofed great job on this next mission costi proofing it greg uh, i didn't get to vote uh, because Kasi, I didn't get to vote top of the line here in the chain gang. Well, then how did this go down? Because you get taken to the creepy warehouse uh, and OK, you have a chance. You can open up the key. You can open up the thing. There's an exemption there. If you go and you take the exemption, you banish everybody here to stay the night. Uh, Kasi's up first. Kasi the mole takes the exemption. How did this play out? I mean, I, I, I didn't vote. So it wasn't my fault. They didn't like, I, I didn't get the right to vote. So I blame all of them. Um, I probably wouldn't have voted for Kasi, but honestly, I don't know who I would have voted for. They would not they would have never voted for me because I would have taken it. So um, mm -hmm. I was fine with the sleepover. That was was cool. this inevitable? Someone was going to take the exemption, right? So, oh, 
with this there was no on. world where you were any of you were escaping with any money it was just sort of a question of well which one of you will will rat the others out first yes yeah, somebody would have um somebody would have taken it no matter what in this in this group of characters there would have been a lot of pretending that they weren't going to take it because it was lots of virtue signaling going on like oh my <laughs> god she's my friend and everyone yeah. like after everyone was like i didn't know kasi was gonna take it kasi knew how cold i was so I'm like oh my god this is crazy mm -hmm. but um yeah we were we were gonna sleep there no matter what but yeah. after it happened we didn't see a lot of people really throwing suspicion on kasi in the show and maybe that's because well like oh well let's not include a lot of confessionals of people saying that we think kasi is the mole because <laughs> she is the mole uh yeah. but but from your perspective were a lot of people starting to look at kasi as the mole after that happened or everybody's like well now any of us would have done it i mean when we got back to the hotel i i ripped her i said we've had to cost i bring up kasi proofing the mission and at this point part of my strategy which was working was becoming the village idiot i was like i'm gonna act really crazy because i know that it's in my nature to be helpful to the group and and i'm just gonna I, no matter what i do i'm gonna be saying helpful things so at that point people already thought I was so outlandish. I think me saying we need to Kasi proof the mission out loud made people just like neutralize whatever they thought about her. Um, and I think I think there wasn't a lot of talk, but I, I also didn't discuss suspicions with anyone. And I made that very clear from the beginning to not come up to me and start those conversations because I just didn't want to indulge it. And also like on, also like, I didn't want to do game stuff without the cameras there. I didn't want to cheat the audience out of that stuff. And also I just like, good looking needed, out. I needed a break. I was like, we only got like when we weren't filming, we were like locked in rooms and given like one mental health 30 minute walk a day with random people like dogs, you know, cause it was a pandemic. And on this walk, I was like, can we just like talk about the pussycat dolls reunion tour? Like, I don't really want to talk <laughs> about this game at all. Yeah. Did y'all have big thoughts about the reunion? Uh, the Pussycat Dolls reunion yeah. tour? I mean, it never happened. It never uh. happened because of COVID. It was supposed to be a UK tour um, in, in starting in April, but then it got canceled. It never got rescheduled. And then Nicole is in a lawsuit now with, with the Pussycat Dolls Corporation. So it's, it's really, really tragic that COVID's the big equalizer and the Pussycat Dolls were a victim to this. Yeah, yeah. the real mole was COVID all along. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Everybody always says that was the one big thing with the pandemic. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not people dolls. dying, but the Pussycat yeah, Dolls. The Pussycat Dolls being, being uh, disrupted. Um, yeah. So she is going to take the exemption. Cassie takes it. Uh, she's gonna enjoy the nice hotel all to herself and a dinner with Alex, a private dinner. Oh, I mean, did Alex know that she was the mole, or was that an awkward dinner for Kasi? I would have loved to be at that dinner, but yeah. I don't know. Um, I they had chicken though, and when we got back and saw her at the hotel, Kasi had a croissant and she let me eat it. So oh, well, that's very oh. kind of. Her. I was very aware of all food at all times. Big um, survivor vibes. I don't think I, I don't think Alex knew Cassie was the mole, but I have no idea. Maybe they were winking at each other when my back was turned. So I have no clue. She uh, she tells you all that she's sorry, and you know it's hard to look people in the eye when you screw them over. And I'm pretty sure if it wasn't me, it was going to be somebody else. Uh, and so eventually you're all just allowed to like go and take naps and clean up. So did you have the day off? I mean, I want to go back to that conversation because I think something that you don't see is that after um, the going back to episode three, um, I don't want to get too much into off cam, but there was retaliation against me and Joy mm -hmm. for that situation. So something that was addressed that I addressed with the group was, was not that, not that I felt that we needed to retaliate against Kasi for doing this, but I just wanted to bring it up that, hey, when when this happens at the Great Barrier Reef, like there were repercussions like socially within the group. And we're all we all were kind of like Casey was like, good job, Kasi. And I'm like, OK, well, I guess we'll just move on from this. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, we we um, we uh, got ready and boom, boom, boom. Time for Great Gatsby dinner. Yeah, Great Gatsby dinner. If you was, look at it, the camera doesn't linger, but like there was 
a very, very elegant 1920s vibe going on. I kept looking out for as much of this as I could get, and I don't think I clocked any great gas. I mean, it's just sad. It's sad to me because the art department was so amazing. I'm like, about we had, this. With the exception of the seafood spread at the Great Barrier Reef, where they had thousands of dollars of shellfish not on ice, which I thought was everyone's like was eating it. I was like, it's there's no ice. Like I'm not eating this. Room but, temp. Um, not okay. It Outdoor was, temp. It was yeah. smelt so bad. And I watched Dom eat three lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and I was like almost gonna vomit. Yeah. But um yeah they we had amazing I mean I can't remember exactly I know you guys clocked the watermelon feta which was so was nice. it good? <laughs> so good. It looked my great. last meal um, but yeah, so there, there were, and, and so that was, that was, I would say our most exquisite dinner. I would say we had amazing conversation. Like everybody got to talk about why they wanted to win the game. And of course, you know, after that dinner, all the dinners kind of go to hell. So it was, mm -hmm. it was yes. sad. It was sad to see, um, it was sad to see Casey go, but right after she got eliminated, Avery goes, I know who the mole is. She announces it to the table. And I go, Avery, I guess we can all leave now. Like, I, <laughs> mm -hmm. let's just go home. Mm -hmm. And she didn't divulge any further? No, she just okay. said, I know who it is. She knows who the mole is at this yes. point. Avery's um, mind games. And they worked on me. They definitely mm. worked on me. Okay, so now it's we're off to Sydney. Uh, and you have to spot the fake. There's like the, the Jackson Pollock painting. And there's the stop with the red. Sur this was so confusing as a viewer, I have to say. I don't know what the if the user experience in the game was any different, but I, we were like, wait, did they say which one they think is fake, or did they say which one they think is real? This segment was weird. I don't really want to get into this ah, mission. Okay. Do you want to put on an immunity <laughs> necklace real quick though, and then get into the mission? Or I would say that. In television, in general, you know, sometimes television is edited to raise the stakes after the fact. So in this case, maybe what happened was kind of boring and not that interesting. And the stakes were lower. And maybe what you saw ended up being more interesting and with raised stakes. So maybe Been we should all out. just be, be grateful. For okay. It. <laughs> okay. But I will... I will say that um, my originally I thought it was I originally I, my first was like oh stop that's fake but as you know a graduate of Vassar College that has a well known art history program yes. I just was Seven I sisters. wanted to talk paintings yeah I wanted to talk about the paintings so I just was going on and on and I just kind of fell in love with the sound of my own voice and got it wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh Okay, well, but that puts you in a good position, at least for, like, your final mission of the game, Greg, because we get into two truths and a lie, and you're psyched about this. You love that you get to put on, like, your SVU hat and interrogate these people. I'm excited because now this is the one time in the game where I'm going to focus on the game. And I was like, if if I can just just make my market research coworkers proud, like, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So I was um, I was very excited for that. So it's, it's Jacob, Joy, and Avery. They all have these cockamamie stories that they come in with, and you have to figure out which one is the lie. But it's obviously Jacob, right? Just immediately. I knew it was Jacob from the beginning. And I think I just, like, he used the word indigenous. And I heard him use that word, like, in the first mission by the plane. And I just, it didn't, it didn't feel like, Someone who's never left the country for, before shouldn't be so confident about like like talking about something that you don't really know that much about. And also Jacob is an actor and he shared with us that he was an actor. So the way he told the story was very like, you know, kind of like a West Hollywood casting couch. You know, there was this like this like narrative. This was and then at the end it made me a better person. And right, I was like, right. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he did not actually eat the white giant naked caterpillar. And that was a we lie. Asked, we said, my questions that you don't see, I said, was the waiter wearing a mask? And Jacob said, yes. And two seconds later, we said, did the waiter have facial hair? 
And Jacob said, yes, a mustache. And we were like, yeah. Mm. Game really? over, son. Was it an invisible mask? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Did you talk about his mustache? Yeah. Get back to West Hollywood, kid. You busted. <laughs> I believe it's uh, Northwest Ohio, actually. Uh, Northwest Ohio. <laughs> Which is the Hollywood of Ohio. Uh-huh, sure. Mm -hmm. Fair, fair. I love you, Jacob. Uh, okay, so you're doing this with Cassie and Will as well. And Cassie is voting against you for, for obvious reasons here. But it sounds like, Greg, that, uh, you know, your, your fate in this moment is a little bit in the hands of of the leader in the hands of will and i think it kind of speaks to how far will and i had come that will really did trust me in this moment and i think that the what will say i think what will says about me in the boat mission is not how he felt about me at the end you know i think i i really took the lead on this mission we had a chance to strategize and i think at this point he he was pretty in the game, when Kasi went left, he went right, which was weird because like they were really good friends. So you think that one of the reasons, like one of the things, strategies in my game, how you can form an alliance without sharing who you're suspicious of is if you get have someone to back you up when you're doing these like group decisions, then you can kind of get the people in the group that you want to because you're friends with someone. So it was it was interesting for me that they would always go against each other in the missions. But at the same time, um, Kasi had this kind of like naivety to her. So it, it was it was in character for her to to not to get it wrong. And I think this is another example of me and Kasi next to her and me probably feeling so confident that I did something right. And me being like, well, she just got it wrong, you know? Yeah. Yes. So when you get out of this, you've got good money in the pot now. Uh, you've got a, you specifically have like a good win under your belt. You then get a Rubik's cube cumber salad in your system. And then everything is going great until joy calls out Jacob as the shithole bowl. I mean, everything wasn't going great. I would say up until that point, I would say it also ran out of clothes. So I had no, ah, no state that was bothering me. And I would say there's there's an underbelly of the game that I think that hasn't really been discussed on this pod. And it's it's the offense and the defense. You kind of talk about the defense here, which is if you think someone's the mole, you isolate them and you make sure that people can't ask them questions. But the offense is if you think, if you know for sure someone is not the mole, how do you expose them as not the mole in front of everybody? And how do you do things to make them want to leave the game? And I think that is uh, something that was going on that you don't see. I'm not innocent. I mean, I, I was. it was all going back and forth. And especially once Pranav was gone, the heat in the game was up. So this, this kind of warfare was, was really going on. And it was brutal and it was hard. And I think Avery speaks to that um, by her elimination as well. You said um, the... Part of it is making people want to leave the game. Uh, is, is that so much as like, okay, the game is like uh, so hard to figure out who the mole is, I want to leave? Or is that like getting into like making the people's time unpleasant on the show? B. Yeah, I would say. And it, it's just, it's just, it's, it's a game with no rules. You know, you can't. You can't be mad if you're playing football and someone tackles you, you can't expect an apology. So right. this was, it was just a, a brutal cutthroat game. And I think when, when a lot of people don't know who the mole is, something you can compensate for not knowing is, well, what can I control? You know, so I can play these crazy games, you know, to, to make people want to leave. And it, it was, it was tough. And it was, you really need to, to be, very strong emotionally and you need to at a certain point in the game not really put too much into those personal relationships and that was something that i my heart was open i was like openly in love with everybody like i just i just needed i just this was the experience of a lifetime for me and i just i didn't want to go through it lonely and i think that was that was a tragic tragic error that I made in the game. Not that I regret it because I can look back and say it was really fun, but leading up to this dinner, like I was not my best self for sure. 
Yeah, so you were feeling some wear and tear from the from like the more aggressive play style that was happening. Were you feeling it directed at you specifically, or was it more just sort of like the general shots being fired? I think I felt it a lot after the boat mission, and I was still like kind of fatigued from it. And then also like I was also doing some of this as well because I wasn't so confident in who the mole was and I didn't want that side of me to come out. So I was embarrassed. I was like embarrassed mm -hmm. by some of what I was doing, but the audience doesn't see that. So, I mean, I'm just like treating this as therapy right now, but, um, which I could use a lot more of. <laughs> hey. but, um, Can uh, we yeah. All? So, so that, that was going through my mind at the time as well. Um, mm -hmm. I was, I was in autopilot on the quizzes. I was just, doing one person and going as fast as I could just to get it over with. Okay. Interesting. Um, so that's, that's the space you're in, even on this final night, even yes. after identifying Jacob and everything goes well. And even though the salad is delicious, you're ready to go. Yes. And can I just ask, so when you talk about people were trying to get other people to not want to continue on playing the game, were, did you feel like that you were on the receiving end of that to where you were racing through the quizzes because you yourself did not want to be there? I don't know. I mean, I think I think I was just tired. I think I my brain was off and I I, I was there to have fun. I wasn't like being fun was the most the vibes important. guy. The vibes were gone. The vibes were down the toilet. Who took the vibes? Who left with the vibes? I mean, I think everybody. It's it's. We all decided collectively. It was the a slow attrition of death yeah. by a thousand vibe. The cut. production was begging us. They were like, "Please act like you like each other." <laughs> they were like, "Please." Oh, so we yeah, did get we one thing like, right, okay. huh? Like the yeah, that was stuff. kind of my wonder by partway through the show. I was like, "Are these people having fun? Yeah. Do they we like were, each other?" We were having so much fun. Like seven started off good. Like we were in Sydney, the Opera House, and I was like, "I'm gonna be friends with everyone." And then we got to this dinner, and I was like, "Ay, ay, 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 ay." Like, let's get me out of here. You so, know? but kind so of related questions to that. Did you all have a sense because it was not portrayed on the show of who different people were suspecting or who they might be targeting on their quizzes and and kind of tied to that people seemed really relieved when pranav went home because he was perceived as such a like intellectual smart hard player is was that all sort of tied in together because you're saying like the game kind of kicked into another gear after Pranav had been eliminated yeah well I knew Pranav wasn't going all in on people so I, I for me there wasn't that much information to gain from it and then mm -hmm. Avery kind of outed you know what they were up to that they both had they both like would go into quizzes and decide together what votes would do. So I, I knew that Avery was splitting votes. And I also knew that Pranav taught Will how to split votes. So I knew Will was doing that too. Um, Joy and I's friendship to me was, I, I valued that a lot. So I never put her in a position to ask her who she was voting for. And she never really asked me who I was voting for. So I didn't really know what Joy, Jacob, or Kasi were up to. Um, so I didn't know that Joy and Jacob suspected Will at all. Was there anyone in particular that you were sharing information with, forming a coalition with over the course of the show? No, I wasn't. I mean, I was, I tried to do, I tried to keep boundaries there. Um, but I, I was not telling anyone who I was doing on the quiz. But at, at that point in the game, I actually had been going all in on joy since Sandy left. Oh, wow. Um, I actually, yeah. I, I, when Sandy left, what was, down was up and what was up was down and i was like even though joy had told me the first night that she wasn't the mole i was like i was looking back on all of these things and kind of changing the story to like fit what i felt and like that isn't that's not you can't do that like hindsight doesn't work like that but sure. but i wanted i wanted joy to be the mole because joy was my friend and i was like this game will be more fun if i just am friends with the mole <laughs> like that's fun like we'll just yeah. hang out I'll ask her questions and and joy could tell that i was answering questions for her and but she knew that she knew that um that i wanted to go i wanted to play an individual game so she she said greg i'm not the mole she didn't try and keep pushing me she knew there was no stopping me and um by the time going into that dinner 
whatever the community theater performance happened at that table between Joy and Jacob, that did not affect how I voted. I was going to put Joy no matter what. And I said to the producers, I was like, I'm going to put Joy down until I go home. I was in complete zombie autopilot. Mm. That doesn't explain why you were shown as being on Takazi at this point. Well, this is one of the biggest spiritual blockages that I've ever had in my entire life is that um, I tried to have two intuitions. I tried to have an intuition for for just the show and an intuition for the game. And whenever those intuitions were at odds, I went with the show. And I think I kind of was, you know, unconsciously, I knew Kasi was the one who was causing all of this. So when the cameras were on, I would just, I would just speak from, I would literally speak from the heart and I would speak from the brain and I would, I would, I would just explain to the cameras what went wrong, but I, I wasn't writing any of that information down. And then when I was alone in my room meditating, like when I would open my eyes, you know, from meditating and from staring out the window for hours at a time, all I could see was joy. It just my, 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 my intuition was saying, put joy down for these quizzes. So I, I was, you know, I, I put joy down all in once, twice and thrice and I got cut. So when you, when you say, when you leave uh, that uh, you said your strategy was working, but you thought that joy was kind of the reason that you were out. That's what you're talking about in that moment with Alex. I mean, she was, yeah. I mean, I, I put her down on the quiz. Um, she didn't like stop me from putting her down, which I didn't expect her to do. And then kind of like also at that last dinner, like um, I was outed as not being the mole. Um, I was, it was discussed that it was a topic of discussion that, um, that, that Samara had put me down and, and, um, that was the reason that she went home. Apparently word on the street, immunity necklace is that the whole group convinced Samara to put me down and then she put me down and left. I don't know if that's true, but okay. that had made its way it was around like a group, group way of ruling nobody nobody thought i was the mole and then the fact that that became a topic of discussion at that dinner in front of everyone i kind of that was one of the things where i was like eh like i i i don't yeah i was it was it was the thing about the show is like and i think uh there andy just did an interview with chris about this the producer is that there's so many reasons why you can do a certain thing. Like there's four different reasons why I'd make a decision. But when you watch TV, it's very like A causes B causes C. So there were, so maybe my subconscious was trying to get me out of there because I, I didn't want to throw missions. And I had worked so hard to gain trust in the group. And, and I had a, a real genuine affection for these people. I didn't, I didn't want to just abuse that, you know, that that's just, that's just not my character. You know, I, I, I really wasn't trying to be malicious or, or take my power to its limit. And I, I regret not really like, I regret not pushing myself that far, but also at the same time, you know, like I, it was time for me to go. With the do over uh, uh, on the table, would you would you take any of this a different way? Like with the benefit of time and space from from being out there and so close to the cucumber salad, like would you do this in a in a different direction? Um, not with the not with the the not with the way that the cast was in the finals. I wouldn't want to be in that final, and I think. Look what happened on that boat. You think I want to be on a mountain with this guy? Like, absolutely not. Like, yeah. Will, credit to Will, he is, uh, he deserved to win. I mean, he, from the beginning, was determined to do whatever it took to win. And there was nothing Will would not do to win. And I think whether I did it over or not, if I was at the end with someone, uh, maybe I would have had the strength, but in that current moment where I was, I don't, I don't know if I could have done it. And maybe I'm not giving myself enough credit, but I think there were um, a lot. You would of, have outrun those drones, Greg. I mean, there, and there was a lot of stuff 
like pointing to Posse in hindsight. And I think there was, this is the spiritual blockage that I had. There were, there were things, my own in yoga, we call it samskara, which is a samskara is like, you're kind of like wound that you're projecting onto other people. And Kasi, you know, really, really knew how to, how to, how to work me. And she did when she would start conversations with me, she would say, I know you don't trust me because I fuck with Will. And I'm like, that is true. So saying that made me neutralize her. You know, I was like that, that's, that's why I don't trust Kasi. You know, even, even though my intuition was screaming threat, 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 mm. you know? So I think it's, it's a lesson, it's a lesson learned. And I think that the important thing is it's a game. It wasn't a real death. It was an ego death. And I think if I can apply these things to my life and I think if the people listening can can learn from this i think i was meant to go out when i was meant to go out i love the outlook i always love this kind of uh view of of how the experience goes so uh i'm all in i think that's great um do you think kasi good mole from your experience i mean nobody the only person who voted for her period was sandy and it was once um so i would say in terms of votes and in terms of of um, really creating this character, you know, she was excellent. But also compared to other seasons, I've I've heard um, Bill didn't have that much time. I've heard in season five that the mole found out 24 hours before. We had COVID. So Kasi had two weeks in quarantine to be, and I don't use this word in in a in a mean way or in a in a silly way, but she was lobotomized, you know, right. she was really trained to be this weapon, you know, against us. And she knew who everybody was voting for on the quizzes. So to even know that, you know, it it really she had a lot of tools at her disposal. And um the second I got eliminated, I knew it was her, you know, because the fog cleared. But I thought, yeah, and and I, I I thought she she got me good. She really did. Why do you think? Uh, could you share some light on on what Joy would have seen in Will to make her go up against Will? I I think what Joy shares in the first episode is exactly what what I felt about Will, which is everybody is hanging on his every word, you know, why are people trusting him? And I think a difference between, and I think Will could say out loud, I'm a team player or I'm here to put more money in the pot, but like what's driving that is, is not, um, is not those things. You know, he was in the game for himself like all of us, but he was also in the game to be Thor, to like look like Aquaman, you know, to to just have muscles and be there with muscles, you know? And, and that was something I saw right away. And I was like, no, like this guy's not the mole. He's put here because he's a competitor. He's here to win. Like this is going to make the show interesting. But but Joy sensed this this like this sinister energy from him, which a lot of us had as is not the only person, but, and I think Joy is um, very intuitive. And I don't think the fact that she picked up on that energy and stuck with it and stuck to her guns, you know, means that, you know, she wasn't playing the game like she was supposed to. Cool. Um, all right, so then you go home. Uh, or what they put you in a room they're like hey you got to stick around for a little while <laughs> I mean I'm on Grinder in Sydney don't feel bad for me okay cool I'm nice <laughs> I'm living deal. the best life what, Sweet. could you I'm go on numbing myself while... yeah what could you like go and like go out and, and do stuff while you were uh in, like in sequester I mean the whole city was in lockdown so nothing was open but I didn't like meet up with the cast or anything I just I just met up with strangers and had did you go to fun. bill and tony's italian <laughs> no all the restaurant yeah. it was takeout only i went to bill's bill's is apparently like the brunch place to go and oh sleep. i thought that and was I somebody rented, you met i rented an oh. e-bike i went to bondi <laughs> i didn't realize that bill was freelancing against tony's Ooh. and i think the other thing too is that like there was there was a lot of time off you know there was a lot of time to to see australia and wherever you got eliminated you got to stay in that area so there was a point at which we were in this beach town i think it was in between episode four and episode five and that was after sandy left and i really love the beach i love this town and i was like you know what if i go home now and i just get to be at the beach for a month you know like 
that's not so bad. So this feeling, and I have this, I have a picture of this town's called Noosa. I have a framed picture of Noosa here because I, I, the vibes were so good there, you know, that, that I was willing to just, I was like, if I, if I'm just in this beach town for the rest of the summer, like I'm good. So, well then so in hindsight, feeling, did you, did you do this wrong? Should you have gotten out of the game earlier? So you'd be well, in the beach I, town. Maybe I was trying to, maybe yeah. they wouldn't let me leave. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, question from the chat. Uh, Carl is asking. Carl with a K, not a Q, Rob. Uh, yeah. Carl is asking, how were the vibes at the reunion? Uh, so what was the reunion like? I assume longer for you than it was for us. <sighs> Immunity necklace. Put it on. <laughs> um the vibes were really fun it was so fun seeing sandy because i was like i thought you were the mole the whole time and she was like you just wanted to be friends with me because you thought i was the mole and i was like uh true <laughs> not not true but um it was yeah it was it was kind of i wish they showed like the audience the montage that we saw because it was like very it was a lot more slapstick like it was really it was like punked like seeing the Kasi footage like mm -hmm. i was howling i was screaming i was also a whole bottle of prosecco in and uh -huh. it was three in the morning so it was it was it was really funny but it was also like like the truman show when truman leaves like it was like really like oh yeah yeah like you really were delusional for three months and a whole and hundreds of people knew how crazy you were being and a whole show is built around you being delusional. So that was like kind of horrific in a way, but um, the vibes were fine at the reunion. Um, they were yeah. Uh, when you were on the other side of the reunion and there was no more short show left to do, somebody who had a survivor bar mitzvah, we were like, what did I just do? Did I just put myself through this? Is this going to be okay? Like what, what's the wait like for you between end of reunion and start of show on Netflix? Well, I had it built in already that I was going to travel a bit. And then I went to Guatemala and I got certified in yoga finally and meditation. So I had already built in this like post show period to like cleanse my body and my soul of like what I just did. And like, even though it was like a, a dream come true, you know, I've always wanted to, to do something like this. I love traveling. I love adventure. I love television. Uh, it was, this is not an easy game. This is like probably one of the hardest, like most demonic games that there is. And it's like, it, 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 it takes a lot, you know? And I think a lot of us were like talking to the therapist and trying to move past it. And it was, it was a long year, but I also like needed to move on and needed to put play things in my life, you know, to, to be in a good place, to have, to have a full-time job, to move across the coast to Seattle, to have my own apartment, you know, to finish getting divorced. to So I could like have a lot of things going on in my life for when the show came out. So my yeah. whole world wouldn't be the show. Um, and, and I did those things and I achieved all those things since the show came out. The question that we ask when we reach moments like these where we're starting to wind down is sort of the gimme, which is, Greg, would you do it again? Would, if they asked you to go back out there, if they asked you to go on the mole patrol one more time, <laughs> go searching for that dastardly mole, would you do it? All stars. Would I do the mole again? Um, I would go back in time and do the show again, for sure. I would say, like, the crew was so phenomenal. Like, it was just a five-star luxury experience for all of us even though a lot of my castmates complain the entire time. But um, mm. I will say, I don't know if I would do the mole again. I feel like I have too much bias. And honestly, honestly, like I would say, I wish I didn't even watch the first season. I wish I didn't know that there was some friendship between Jim and Catherine and Steven, because going into a show and expecting to be friends with the mole, you know, is, is really the first mistake that you make. You know, I mean, granted, amazing for Will and Cossie. I mean, they've developed this beautiful friendship. I think that's fabulous that they could go off in the distance and have this amazing bond between the two of them. But for me, I I clearly was trying to be best friends with the mole. I left the show with Sandy as a good friend. I left the show with Joy as a good friend. I have a lot of other friends from the show, but I didn't win, you know? So I I would do it again if you can zap my brain and literally like forget about 
the experience one and I can just start from scratch. What if they could throw you on the survivor, the bar mitzvah uh, dream? I feel life? like I'd be the first to go. I feel like I, I mean, my, my, I can't manage my threat level and I, I know too much about camping. Like, why am I going to keep my mouth shut and get bug bites when I can boss everybody around and eat hot dogs? You know, like I, I don't think I would last on survivor. Um, I would do it for sure. I mean, honey, like I would, Get me a camera and I'll do anything. Sure. Seriously. I mean, on but, these six person tribes now, you might be good to, I mean, it, compared to this season, you'd be good to I, go I, to I the merge, no problem, apparently. Survivor's kind of ruined for me. Like when we were in lockdown, me like too. we didn't have phones or TV. We didn't have phones or computers. We <laughs> just had like TV. And so I watched Australian Survivor and we didn't have like, we didn't have access to like pornography or anything. So I kind of Survivor became something else um, oh wow uh which season were you watching is that how it's ruined for you josh is that how it's ruined for you um no comment as well survivor became something else the olympics became something else oh and australia ninja warrior became something else oh i could see it oh, Interesting. We know somebody who was which survivor it. it was it was king george okay okay great yeah. season Right. yes me, and, me it, it was so crazy because we were like filming the mole and then me, Joy, and the crew, we would talk about George and Haley and like the, 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 we would, we would be watching a reality show while on being a reality show. So it was crazy. Yeah. Well, that's just so funny because I had said in one of the podcasts that I felt like that I, I loved having your energy on the show because I felt like that it was like a similar like uh, archetype to like uh, somebody like George on uh, Survivor. And so that's really uh, incredible that, you know, they, that you were watching that season. Maybe I was channeling George. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't. Greg. Yeah, I, I take that as the highest compliment. I thought he was incredible, and I was, you know, jealous that he made it all the way to the top two. Like that's mm -hmm. great for him. Do you great. follow the U.S. Survivor anymore? I don't. I mean, I'm very, I'm very aesthetically driven. So it's like at this point, it's like the same clothes, the same dusty, the same like pontoon that they're swimming in. So I'm can't, I kind of fell off the survivor um, wagon. Um, so I, I really liked watching Australian survivor, but I don't follow survivor currently. I'm uh, more housewives. Like, yeah. Yeah. Did this change how you view reality TV at all or no? Honestly, like I wrote my thesis about reality TV in college. Oh, I've PA'd <laughs> on shows before. I've interned for shows. I was developing and pitching my own show at one point. So I would say like I've been in the game a little bit, you know, and I'm I would love to continue being in the game. It's so when different I got to be right like at the at the producer's mercy is a totally different experience. It's different, but I knew how to, you know. Get Work the goods, that. give them the goods. I, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. You know, like I, they they didn't give me any special treatment and they really put me through it because I was, I, I was willing to bleed, not literally, but I was willing to bleed figuratively for the show. And that's how the process works. Like you can't try and be anybody but yourself. And I think this being on the show validated kind of what I thought I knew about reality TV. Um, but it's... It's we're in a different world right now. Reality TV really has changed. I think when you look back on on um, real world back in the day, it was like about hot mics and about Franken clipping. And then now we're in kind of this realism world. Especially, oh, I thought Netflix. hot mic was a person. Mm -hmm, I thought so too. Yeah, no, like like oh my god, you said this, but but here on this show and and on Netflix especially, like you really try and see everything that comes out of people's mouths. So I think it makes some people kind of present something that's a little bit different than what they are. And I think that the realism is is a little bit gone. Um, yeah. So I, I hope that I got to bring that back. I don't know, maybe. Um, to the rest of the patrol, do you have anything for Greg before we begin winding down? Zed, Jess, Rob? I mean, is there another show you would do? I would do, yeah, I would do like any <laughs> show. I would, I can't say that I wouldn't do. I mean, I feel like the circle would be fun. I just like sit there and talk, you know? Um, sorry. Would you want to yeah. be a catfish or would you want to be yourself? I'd be a catfish. Yeah. I would be like some kind of like 
girl from sleepaway camp sort of all right thing. yeah <laughs> watch out for season what are they up to four yeah. <laughs> that what sounds country? weird Which country? you're in the netflix cinematic universe i, I want to be i would love to be yeah like put me on i don't know i'd love to host a reunion that would yeah. be my dream we would love like someone the... too yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're trying our we're best we're trying yeah we're doing what we can uh but is that anything do, I, yeah that's it i mean yeah. i do anything i do housewives i do too hot to handle i'm just hot enough yeah. We did originally. We, our original comment after the premiere was, "We're all did all these people apply for two out to handle, and then they got put on the mole instead." Yeah, I was okay. I mean, okay. Not, so no. I don't. I don't want to say this. I, there was a lot of criticism about the attractiveness of the cast, oh, and I no. felt, I felt that I felt like that was a little much. I was happy to be a part of this as one of the older non Instagram people. But I felt like guys, like it's, we can't, we can't just talk about people's looks like this, whether they're attractive or not attractive. Like I, I, I don't stand for that. Okay. Fair but enough. can we talk about you wearing the dress at the finale? Uh, I mean, I was, so I was happy. That, that was the one outfit I had left. And as soon as I got eliminated, I texted a picture of it to the wardrobe people. I was like, I'm wearing this to the finale. And I think that was, I'm so happy Zed that you brought that up because I wanted to touch on this, just like being a gay person growing up, like in the nineties, like the only people we got to see gay people on TV were on reality shows. And it started with um, Jerry Springer and it started with like Jenny Jones or Ricky Lake and the only time we would even see gay people is in the context of like being duplicitous and like yep. are they cheating is this and it was like it was like I think if people if Gen Z watches it today like they'd be absolutely horrified but like for us this was how we like learned about other gay people besides ourselves so for me being able to be a gay person an out gay person on this show on Netflix which doesn't have a lot besides the Fab Five like there's all the shows are just straight people. I was really, really, really touched. And I took that as something that I would take really seriously. And I thought, you know what? I need to represent a lot of different people. And I think it, this show is airing in a hundred countries. And the, the truth is in, in our world, we take it for granted that men can wear dresses. But in most of the world, if a man goes into a store and buys a dress, like they could be arrested or killed. So I wanted to use my body for the movement to be a radical. I talked about it on the show. A lot of that didn't get shown, but it was a privilege and an honor to represent myself and hopefully show other, you know, gay people that, you know, I'm not just this like conniving gay villain. Maybe you can act like the stereotype to get through the door, which is what I did. <laughs> but once you're there, you know, you can spread your wings and be whoever you want to be. So wearing the dress was my most proud moment on the show. That's awesome. That's awesome. Love that. Um, Greg, thank you so much. You're so generous with your time. Uh, so generous with, uh, with your throat chakra, with your immunity necklace, with everything. Uh, we greatly appreciate this. This is so much fun for all of us. Thank you so much. Thanks for being fans of the show. And yeah, um, who do I send the Venmo for questions? Um, <laughs> think uh, uh, Sam will take care of that. Sam will handle it. Sam will handle it. Uh, Greg, where can people find you? Give the plugs. Guided by Greg on all platforms. Um, you yeah. posted the Zumba video a few days ago. I literally just saw yes zumba that. i'm gonna start teaching yoga in seattle so keep your eye out for that zumba reiki meditation like just all of all of the things um but support um, your local queers you guys amazing um all right so that's where you find greg the rest of us were out there as well jess at haymaker hattie zed is at hard rock hope Rob is at Rob Sesternino. I'm at Ron Howard. We're on Rob has a podcast. It's the name of the podcast that we're on that you should be subscribed to. The Mole Patrol, you should subscribe to that. Ratings and reviews, greatly appreciated. And of course, you want to follow along for live podcasts, live video streams, YouTube here for Rob has a podcast, all of that great stuff. Am I missing anything? Plugs around the room. Jess, we're still talking about zombies. Still talking about zombies. Rewatch the mole. Sorry. Yeah. yeah well, you really watch it. Watch it twice. Watch, watch it, it two times time. and watch it. This is my challenge. Watch the mole again and watch it with the lens that.
Greg is telling the truth the whole time. And <laughs> maybe he is the guru of the group. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. See, so I let's... thought you were saying just like to like um, you know juice the stats for Netflix. Oh yeah, just like it was just like keep it running in the background. I mean, that too. Well, the mole is a show that should be watched twice. I think mm-hmm. that is the that's the point of the show, and I think there's not other shows that that are like that. So okay, mm-hmm. once you know, you should watch it again. All right, folks, we're gonna turn off the podcast now and go rewatch the mole uh, for a second time, and we'll report back with our findings and maybe with special guests along the way. Who knows? We don't know if this is the end or if there's more to do. We would certainly love to do more, so don't unsubscribe. If there's more to be done here on this season of the mole, you will hear about it here first. Until next time, we appreciate all of you who've been watching live, who've been listening after the fact, all of that good stuff here. Uh, until next time, folks. Take care. Adios. Bye-bye.